Although hygiene in the Middle Ages was primitive in contrast to what modern people enjoy, this does not mean that medieval hygiene did not exist. People adopted the best sanitary measures they could despite living in a period before indoor plumbing, shampoo, and nail salons. Unfortunately, they didn't have a lot to work with. So what was hygiene like for medieval peasants? Subscribe and leave us a comment below. Women used rags, moss, or twigs as menstruation pads. Historians believed women resorted to using a variety of items to collect blood during their periods. Many women probably used pieces of rags they tore up. Other theories suggest some women wrapped strips of cloth around a small twig and used it as a tampon, or possibly collected absorbent moss and used it as a pad. It's also very likely some women did nothing and simply bled on their clothing. Menstruation was considered shameful by religious authorities, and many women felt they had to hide it. They may have carried scented herbs or flowers with them to mask any smell, but considering medieval women didn't live long, and many peasant women lived hard lives involving heavy labor and little sustenance, it's entirely possible that women had fewer periods during their short lives than women do in modern times. Most peasants rarely bathed and others literally never did. Many people from the upper class could bathe in tubs with hot water, and many people from the middle class used public baths. Peasants, on the other hand, had to make do with much less. Bathing required a lot of work because there was no flowing water and peasants had to physically haul water from wells or rivers to their homes. Those who lacked a suitable space indoors took their baths outside. Since many peasants performed manual labor all day, bathing helped remove dirt and stinky sweat, and it also helped them avoid lice and fleas. They didn't always use soap, but when they did, it often consisted of an alkaline solution, such as a mixture of salt and lime. Since bathing required so much work, some peasants decided not to wash themselves at all. These people were relatively rare, however, most peasants found time to bathe, even if it didn't happen frequently. Most peasant men didn't shave at all. Although peasants did wash their hair occasionally, shaving wasn't as easy. Mirrors at the time were either made of lead-backed glass or polished metal, but it was difficult to see a clear image. Mirrors were often small, so many men in medieval times went to a barber for their weekly shave. Many peasants couldn't afford to pay someone for a shave and some didn't own mirrors, so many decided not to shave at all. Peasants did not have the luxury of using toilets that were made up of a bench with a hole over an opening. As an alternative, the poorer classes used outhouses and frequently had to share them with the community. Those without access to outhouses made use of chamber pots. If they could not afford such things, they used waste buckets. People then emptied their chamber pots and waste buckets into nearby cesspits or into the river. Instead of toilet paper, they used straw, grass, moss, or hay to wipe themselves. Prior to current sanitation ideas, some people believed that the smell of waste caused disease, not the waste itself. Historians believe that some individuals emptied their contents out the window or into the street to get rid of the smell from indoor chamber pots. Dumping chamber pots outside the house, as well as people relieving themselves in public, were both frowned upon by society, and laws were enacted to prohibit such behavior. However, people occasionally disobeyed the regulations resulting in unclean streets and contaminated water supplies after rainstorms. Although people dressed in layers to avoid washing outer garments too often in medieval times, peasants often owned only one set of clothing. Linen was used for clothing next to the skin, while heavier wool clothes were worn over the undergarments. People understood that cleaning their clothes kept parasites away, and etiquette books advised changing one's underwear every day. However, for peasants, this was not always a possibility. Those who could afford more than one set of clothes changed into new ones once a week while washing their old ones. When it was warm enough, many peasants slept without clothes at night. This meant they needed even less clothing. When peasants couldn't afford to send their clothes to a professional laundress, they did their own laundry in the river, usually with lye soap. In the Middle Ages, rivers were often dirty because of human waste, trash, and animal waste from the streets. Peasants slept on straw that attracted fleas and vermin. Many medieval peasants slept on beds made of straw, as they were relatively comfortable and provided insulation. Although peasants changed the straw inside their beds on occasion, many did not change it regularly enough, and bugs and vermin attracted to the straw stuck for extended periods of time. Bedbugs, fleas, lice, and rats infesting the straw were common problems for peasants with these kind of beds. People added fragrant plants and flowers to the straw, like mint, chamomile, and lavender to help combat this. Peasants had wool blankets and linen sheets for covering themselves while they slept, if they could afford it. During the medieval time, peasants used twigs to clean their teeth in the absence of toothbrushes. They really appreciated using small hazel tree branches. Some folks also washed their mouths with water after rubbing a piece of wool over their teeth. 
Those who could afford it made a paste out of salt and sage to freshen their breath and whiten their teeth. Because their diet included virtually no sugar due to their limited finances, peasants didn't suffer from many cavities. However, the stone ground bread they consumed wore away their teeth. A peasant would need to have a tooth out if their dental hygiene wasn't sufficient and they experienced dental problems. Most dental work was done by barbers rather than dentists. Because there was no anesthetic available, patients were forced to consume alcohol prior to having their teeth operated on. Peasant women in medieval times ran the household in addition to cooking food, milking cows, tending to the garden, and fetching water. Daily or weekly tasks could have included churning butter, baking bread, and grinding grain. Expectations of the time also gave women the responsibility of keeping the home clean, as well as their husband's clothing. They were expected to remove fleas from their bedroom and bed. Women were advised by etiquette and advice books to use white sheets so that insects and parasites could be easily spotted. Some ladies placed alder leaves around the room to prevent the development of parasites. Because towns expected people to keep the areas outside their homes clean, women most likely picked up this task, as well. With no schooling and few chances to learn, peasants carried superstitions for decades. As the influence of the church spread, people turned to prayer in order to cure their ailments. Eventually, education spread across Europe and information about science and medicine helped doctors become more proficient. A few of the ideas medieval citizens discovered even led to modern medicine. They created hospitals, performed surgery, and experimented with different antiseptics. Surgeons discovered wine could be used to clean wounds, and learned they could close lacerations with cauterization. Despite these advances, doctors never realized the connection between infection and hygiene, and many people perished as a result. The food of medieval peasants was mostly consisted of what could be grown on their farms, beans, grains, vegetables, and onions. The soil used to grow food and the water used to prepare meals could be contaminated with human or animal excrement depending on how close a peasant lived to a cesspit or a contaminated water source. With no refrigeration, Fresh vegetables were an impossibility in winter and the grains and root vegetables they stored could rot or become infested with vermin. Fungi could poison grains if people weren't careful and people could suffer bouts of stomach distress, diarrhea, or other sicknesses due to spoiled food. Many peasants couldn't afford meat, but if they were lucky enough to earn enough money to buy some or slaughter one of their own animals, they had to dry the meat with salt or it would decay. Many peasants simply starved if the weather was bad and harvests failed. Peasants ate with their hands because, aside from knives, cutlery was hardly used at the time. While they washed their hands before and after each meal to maintain etiquette, dirt trapped under fingernails or a poor hand-washing job could also lead to contamination. A lack of understanding of why people get sick frequently made hygiene ineffective. Doctors in medieval times adopted the theory of humorism and made connections between organs of the body, seasons, elements and tempers. This led them to believe sickness happened when the body was out of balance. They also thought parasites originated within people's bodies and caused the imbalance to occur. Doctors theorized that controlling one's diet, such as eating less fruit, could help prevent the body from producing lice. What they didn't realize, however, was that poor waste management and some people's failure to bathe often led parasites to be attracted to people. No matter how many times people washed their hands, the lack of understanding about the connection between filth, infestation, and sickness meant no one was safe from parasites and disease. Communal cesspits held the waste from chamber pots and outhouses. Whether it was originally deposited in an outhouse or a chamber pot, the waste of peasants eventually wound up in cesspits. Sometimes, many people shared the same toilet or set up a number of outhouses to empty into a communal cesspit. In addition to waste, people also dumped their garbage into the pits, adding to the stench. Some unlucky laborer had the job of emptying these cesspits, but they often leaked and contaminated the groundwater and soil. Contamination may have also traveled to rivers that provided water for drinking, bathing, and laundry. Regulations required that cesspits be located a certain distance from people's homes, but that did not save people from the smell. Stinky waste-filled holes, widespread disregard for requirements to dump chamber pots out windows, the waste of horses and farm animals passing through town, and the rats, mice, and other vermin attracted to the mess combined to make staying clean in medieval times a real challenge. Although it was difficult, peasants in medieval times liked to keep themselves as clean as they could. Not only was keeping oneself clean a sign of pride, many considered it common etiquette. Popular etiquette especially advised people to wash their face and hands after waking up, and to continue the practice of hand-washing throughout the day. Even peasants could do so, as it didn't require much water which they would have had to collect through hard labor by carrying to their homes. Since peasants didn't have utensils and instead ate with their hands, washing hands before and after a meal was especially important. Thanks for watching, subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment below.